Welcome to the video on energy diagrams. So we have been looking at chemical reactions and calculations and we've learned what's an endothermic versus an exothermic reaction. And now we're just going to look at a diagram that sort of represents that reaction and the energy that's involved through the progression of it. Um, so for a reaction to occur, two molecules must collide with enough kinetic energy to break bonds. Remember, for a reaction to occur, we have to break bond, re break reactant bonds and form new products, okay? And not only that, but our molecules have to collide in a way that's the proper orientation, okay? And the reason for this, and your book doesn't really, may not go into this, is that we, for b new bonds to form, you have to have orbital overlap. And so they have to properly overlap. So this is a proper orientation. So molecules have to find each other in the flask or wherever they are and collide with enough energy and in the proper orientation. Okay, if you really start thinking about this, um, it's really sort of mind-boggling on the molecular level of what all has to go on for a reaction to work. Okay, and so it's sort of... Um, it's very interesting how, how this works and how so many reactions do um, work. And here's an improper orientation, okay? And so you've got that coming up, so that's not going to be enough overlap to make a new bond. All right, so in an energy diagram, so energies, say that zero is going up this way, okay? So you have reactants, A and B are bonded, and there's C, okay? As you, if you think about this like a ball rolling up a hill, okay, it takes energy. We've already discussed this, that you have to put in energy to break bonds. So the reactants have to absorb enough energy in order to come up and get over this hill. Okay, this hill is called the energy of activation. Okay, it's the difference in the energy between the reactants and the transition state. Okay, transition state is where your um, the state at which your react reactants, okay, you've broken some bonds, they start to transition to looking like your products. Okay, um, so if you think about a ball, you had to push it up the hill, right? You've got to put energy into it to get up on the hill, and then when you let the ball go, go once you have enough energy, then the reaction proceeds. Okay, it's the same thing. It rolls down the hill, the reaction proceeds, and you form the products. Okay, and so um, different reactions have different energies of activation. So you can imagine if this hill was bigger, so we're going to pretend that we have a reaction. Well, if I can draw here, yeah, we'll do that. Okay, and it goes like this. Okay, it has a higher energy of activation. Okay, so that would mean it has more, it's going to take more energy to get those reactants, to get enough energy for those bonds to break and for new bonds to form. So this would have a higher energy of activation we had one that looked like this, okay, this would have a lower energy of activation. Okay, delta H, we discussed previously, this is your enthalpy. Okay, so this is the difference in the reactant energy and the products. Okay, and notice here, the products are lower in energy. Okay, so if you watched the previous video, okay, this would be an exothermic reaction because your products are low in energy. So your delta H here is negative, right? Because it's lower. So the energy of activation is the very minimum amount of energy that a reaction reactants must have for the reaction to occur. So the energy of activation is also called the energy barrier. 
and the height of it determines the reaction rate. Okay? If you have a really high energy of activations, okay, then few molecules have enough to cross the energy barrier, and the reaction is slow. And when the energy of activation is lower, then many more molecules can cross over it, and the reaction is faster. Okay, so if we look at the difference here, okay, delta H is still negative, okay, by 10 kcals per mole. It's lower than the reactants. This is your delta H. Okay, it's different than energy of activation. Energy of activation is the difference in the energy of the transition state and the reactants versus here is of the products and the reactants. The difference in energy between the reactants and the products, here's your delta H, is negative, so it's exothermic. Okay, and this has a low energy barrier. Okay, and so this is going to be faster than the previous diagram that we looked at. Okay, so now if you look at this, so from reactants to transition state, okay, this is our energy of activation. So this is our energy barrier. Okay, so do you think this reaction is going to be slower or faster than the previous one? Okay, look how small that energy of activation is. So it's not going to take me as much energy to get that ball up on the top of the hill. Whereas here, it's going to take, that's pretty steep. That's going to take me a lot of energy to get my, re, my bonds to break and get to the top of the hill. Okay, so this is going to be slower. Okay, and then another big difference here, your delta H is positive. Okay, the products are higher in energy than the reactants. Okay, so this is an endothermic diagram. If you look at the previous, your products were lower in energy than the reactants, and that's an exothermic. So exothermic, and this is endothermic. Okay, and this one has a much higher energy barrier. It's going to be much slower than the previous reaction, and it is also endothermic. Okay, endothermic means that the reactants have stronger bonds, okay, and the reactants are more stable. Alright, that's it for energy diagrams, and next we will look at reaction rates. Thank you.